Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to continue our series of iOS 5 versus Windows Phone 7 Mango and Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. This time we're going to compare email. Now these videos or these series of videos, if you haven't seen the others, are more about helping you be informed as to which platform you want to choose and spend your money on. So we're going to compare iOS 5 on the iPhone 4S. We have the HTC Titan with Windows Phone 7 Mango, and we have the Galaxy Nexus with Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. We're going to look into email in depth and show you how they work. I get a lot of questions on how different things work with that. So let's go ahead and start off with the iPhone 4S. I'll move the other phones out of the way and we'll turn it on and unlock it. Now let me go ahead and zoom in to make this a little bit easier to see. So here we have the home screen. Let's go into settings first. We do have some email settings we want to check out. So here is general iCloud mail. So under mail, I have all of my different accounts, as you would expect. We can add an account and then we can go into detail into each one. I'm going to use my Gmail account across all of them. So let's go into Gmail and here we have my account. These are where the settings are for the account. So we've got your name that you want on the email account, your email address, password, the description as to what it is, the SMTP server, advanced, so on if you need to set up the account. Gmail allows you to sync mail, calendars, and notes, so you can do that. You can also archive messages as opposed to deleting them. So let me go ahead and go back. We can add an account. Now below we can fetch new data. We can set that to push. Uh, we can also fetch data every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hourly or manually. And then we have advanced settings for each one. So here you can see for Mac or at me address, we've got push, fetch, push all the way down here. Uh, Gmail, fetch, manual. So we have settings for each one individual. And then we have mail for 50 recent messages, uh, preview two lines, minimum, minimum font size, uh, show CC label, so on and so forth. We can BCC yourself, sent from my iPhone as far as the signature, default account, and then it goes on to contacts below, import SIM contacts, calendars, etc. So those are all the settings, pretty customizable as far as the email goes, as far as what you want to do with that. Let's go into the email client itself. So here you can see my email. You can scroll through it just like you can on all the other phones, and I'll show you that afterward. And here we can search for anything. So we could search for Mac, and it will bring up Mac. We can search on the server, things like that, and it will bring up more information. Once we have the search or information that we want, we can select that. And if we don't, we can select from, to, subject, etc. So let's go ahead and look at the mail itself. Now we can go into the mail just by tapping like you would expect. Scroll through here. We can pinch to zoom within mail. And we have some options along the bottom. We can refresh. We can move the mail to a different folder. We can delete it. We can reply forward print if you have a wireless printer. You can also compose a new message. Let's go back. We can also go to the next message by hitting this button and then the next and so on and so forth, or go up a message by hitting the up arrow. Now, if we go back to here, we can delete the email in a couple different ways. So we can delete by sliding and hitting delete, or we can hit edit and select multiple email messages to delete. Now I want to cancel that, so I'll do that. Also, when you have this option, you can also move the email or mark it. So you can mark it, flag it, mark it as unread. Uh, you can also move it to any folder you'd like. You can do this for each individual email box, which you see here as mail. You can see them individually, or you can see them as all inboxes. It's up to you how you want to see it. And here's the accounts and different things. So pretty simple and they're all here. Now if I compose a message, I do have one more option. I can hit this plus button, get my contacts, type in the email address if I know it. If I tap here on the from, I can change to who I want to sent from, so from Zolotech or my Gmail account. I also have the option to change my subject line like you'd expect, and I can dictate to it on the iPhone 4S with this little button here uh, for the microphone. So I can say, I'm typing an email, for a video on Zolotech.com. It doesn't understand Zolotech very well, but it does a pretty good job overall 
and I'm going to cancel that message. It also will save the draft if you want to. So that's pretty much email on the iPhone. Uh, you can use some voice commands through Siri to do some of those things uh, as far as texting and, and talking to email, but it won't read your email for you, and maybe they'll have some updates in the future. But as of right now, you just pretty much go into the email and go from there. Now let's move on to Windows Phone 7. Let me zoom out a little bit since I have a larger phone here. Now, if I had an email message, we'd have a number two on the mail folder itself. And I didn't show you that because I didn't have any email messages, but I have a number two or one, depending on how many messages right here is an indicator. On this phone, I'd have a number two right here or one or whatever, depending on how many emails I have. If I tapped on it and then I went back, that number would disappear. If on the iPhone, if I didn't read those messages, that number wouldn't appear. So it works a little bit differently on both platforms. But let's go ahead and check out our email settings first, just like we did on the iPhone. So we'll go all the way down to settings. We'll go down to our email and accounts. And here you can see similar settings. I can add an account. You can see Windows Live, Twitter, Google. It says it's syncing, so I can't go into it. Uh, and it tells me if attention is required. Now, there isn't anything to the left or right on here that I can pivot to. Uh, so for now, we'll go to Windows Live. And the options are similar throughout the different platforms, uh, throughout the different email boxes, rather. And here you can see we have Windows Live, that's the account name, how often we want to download it, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hourly or manually. We can download mail from the last seven days. We can content or content to sync email. If it had more options like calendar, like Gmail, it would do that. We have the username or the email address, password, server settings. We can say done or cancel. We'll go back and we'll go home and we'll go into our linked inboxes. Now linked inboxes is similar to the iPhone in that it's taking all of the inboxes and putting them into one. If we don't want to do that, we can change that. So if we, anytime we see these three dots here, we have some more options on Windows Phone 7. Slide up, we have folders, so we can have folder options. If I slide up again, we have settings, which is for each individual email account. So we've got sync settings, uh, can't be changed while syncing, but it's in conversations, show replies and email from your synced folders. Uh, there's a signature, always BCC myself, and pretty simple. Let's go back. If I slide up again, we have linked inboxes, like I said. Here's all of the linked inboxes that are in one inbox. If I want to link this inbox, I can tap it, it will link it. If I want to tap this again, I'll unlink it. So I'll look at it separately than from this one box. So I can set those up as separate tiles on my home page or home screen, or I could have them individual. It depends on what you want to do. Now here I have it all linked and we have some options along the bottom. We can create a new one with this plus button. You just saw those options with this button here refresh or search. So we have all the options we do on an iPhone. If we pivot to the right, we have unread. So if we had unread email, they'd be in here and then flagged email. So we can flag our email and urgent and all. So let's go into the same email. And what you'll see here is the, similarly, we can scroll, we can pinch to zoom and it's an email. We can go to the next message by hitting this arrow here or we can delete it, we can reply, reply all, or forward. And down here we can toggle flag, so if we hit this button, we flagged it, we can unflag it, or we can mark as unread, or we can move it. It's really all up to us how we want to do that. So you can see it's unread, so now this is highlighted in blue as an unread message. We go in, it's now red, and it turns to black and white. So it's really nice. And it also groups email by thread. So here you can see fast track. Uh, that's where I buy gasoline. So it, what it did is it grouped it in a thread like this. And what it does that makes it nice is I can delete all of those at once if I want. And what you just saw there is I just tapped next to the email and it, and it checked it and said you want to delete it. I can do that with any of these email messages. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to uncheck them. And we can delete email two ways. When I started using this phone, uh, being used to an iPhone, I hit this button here, slid everything over, and I could tap to unlock it or, or 
check it so I could delete it rather. Now, one of the interesting things is it said there's a faster way to do that. It actually popped up a little thing on the bottom and says, I see you're deleting a lot of messages. There's a faster way to do that. And it told me how to just tap next to it and it works just like you'd expect. So it's pretty nice that it allowed me to do that and showed me a quicker way to do it. So that was pretty interesting. Now we can create a message here. We'll show you the same thing. Uh, we'll do one from Gmail. Two, again, we can select from our contacts by hitting the plus button. We can put a subject and we can uh, type in what we want. Uh, there isn't any dictating in the email here. We don't have voice options to simply talk. We can talk, we can text uh, typing and set priority and show CCC and BCC. We can also do attachments, but we can't really do anything other than that. Uh, you can do attachments on any of these phones, but we really can't do anything other than that. We can't talk our email, which is odd because you can talk a text on here. So that's one of the options. Uh, pretty neat, but uh, that's how texting or I'm sorry, that's how emailing works in Windows Phone 7. Let's go ahead and look at email on Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. So here's the Galaxy Nexus. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And you can see here is our home screen. Now if I had email here it would notify me at the top with a little um, little box in the notifier that showed a little envelope and alerted me to email. Now email is a little bit different on this phone in that I tried to find a way to link my inboxes with the generic Gmail app that comes with it. Now unfortunately you can't do that to my knowledge. I tried to find different ways to do it and the only way I could find to make a unified inbox was with their email app. It comes on the phone but it's not the actual Gmail app so I thought that was kind of interesting that it, it works that way. So we're going to go ahead and go into the email app I have three email boxes linked here and with as with Windows Phone 7 anytime you see three dots there's actually settings there. Let's start with the settings at the top here. We have this little arrow. We tap on the arrow. It shows the different email boxes, the combined view, draft sent and show all folders. We'll hit back. Now down at the bottom we can send a message, we can search our messages, we can see our folders. We also can refresh and we have options. We can go into settings here, so let's do that. And we'll find settings for Gmail. And here again, we have our account name, your name, signature, quick response, default account if we want to use it for that, data usage, inbox check frequency, so we can check whenever. Uh, we have auto download attachments, and that means any attachment connected via Wi Fi, when we're connected via Wi Fi, will download if we have that checked. We can choose a ringtone and we do have some sound settings. They're under sounds though on the iPhone and Windows Phone 7 for email. They're not actually as easily accessible within the email app on those phones. So that's why I didn't go into that. But we do have sound options on the others as well. We can remove the account out outgoing settings, incoming settings. So we have some pretty good customization here as you would expect with Android. So let's go back. Now we went to settings. Now under the email itself, let's pick a uh, We'll pick, I guess, this one, a CES email. Now here you can see, just like you'd expect, uh, you can scroll, at least this one doesn't have any content below, but what it says is show pictures. And by default, Windows Phone 7 doesn't show the pictures and you have to download them every time. iPhone always shows the pictures. Android shows them if you want them to show them. So here you can say it says always show pictures from the sender. If I don't really know who the sender is, maybe I don't trust them, I don't want them, or maybe I don't want to use data, but in this case, let's show the pictures. So now they'll be shown automatically. Why they're not showing up, I'm not really sure, but we can pinch to zoom here also, just like in the others. We can reply with this button here. We can voice dictate the message. So. I'm testing out email on Android 4.0. And just as one of my other videos, you saw that it did 4.0H, but that's fine. So you can see it's dictating while I'm talking. It does a pretty good job of that. It's really nice to use. And then we just send it with that button up here. So overall, email's great on this phone too. We can go to the next message. Mark is unread and we have settings. We can go to the next message, go back and forth this way. Uh, one last thing let me show you is the Gmail app because a lot of people want to use flags and things like that or tags in, in Gmail. And we have this little tag down at the bottom here. If we hit this, uh, we, I'm sorry, labels, but it's a tag for labels. Uh, you can la manage your labels. 
and you have different settings within here as well. So we can manage all the different labels, what we want to label. Uh, if you use that heavily in Gmail, you'll really like that feature in here. We also can uh, check out some label settings where we have different sync messages, emails, ringtones, vibrates for different labels, things like that. So highly customizable as you would expect for Android. And it seems to work really well for all the email. Each phone is unique in how they handle email. Let me move them back all over into view here. But each phone handles email in their own way. Let me zoom back out. Each phone's great for email. Uh, they do a great job, each one of them. You're going to get more customization with Android, as you might expect. But they've all got some pretty good options as far as email goes. As far as easily deleting email, I find Windows Phone 7 is pretty good at that. Uh, they're all pretty equal, but I like how it throws them in threads and it easily allows you to delete them. Uh, overall, though, they're all great. They work well, and uh, I'd recommend any of them as far as email goes. Now, if you have any comments on something I may have missed, you know, I use a lot of these phones all the time, but that doesn't mean I know every little thing about each phone. So if you do, please go ahead and comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about uh, something I may have missed and how you can help someone else out if I miss something that you find valuable or important on each one of these phones uh, so we can better help those that don't have one of these phones go out and pick the right one. So if you haven't subscribed already to this channel please go ahead and do that and again comment on anything you may have to say uh, positive please about one of these phones be sure to check back for more videos as we're going to continue this series in particular and as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time